So I have a few buddies of mine that are still new to Reaper, and uh, I thought of making a video to help them, you know, set up a simple project just to get themselves up and writing. So I figured why not just, you know, make a video to show anyone who's new to this. So to start, you'll see this plugin right here, Reastream. It's that all it's doing is sending my audio from Reaper to OBS so I can record the audio straight from Reaper and not from other sources. Otherwise, this is just a blank project that you would see upon opening Reaper for the first time. Your theme might be different. This is kind of a general looking theme, even though it's called like Cubase, whatever. I forget what the default even looks like. Yeah, it's ugly. But yeah, if you wanted to change themes, you can download them. But we'll go back to what we were on because that just looks the best for now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that your audio interface is being recognized and working properly with your computer. Uh, to get to your interface options, you can either click in the top right here. It'll bring up this menu, device, yada, yada. Um, I'll show the longer way. You go up to options, down to preferences at the very bottom. And then on the left where it shows device, it'll have uh, all these options here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be ACO. That's usually the name of the driver you download. You can do direct sound if you're playing directly from your computer, but nine times out of 10, if you're just running through an interface, you're just gonna want it to be through that and through ACO anyways. And your driver is always going to be whatever device you're using, your audio interface. So like I said, I'm using the Audient ID4, so it's gonna be grabbing that guy. Um, my one buddy has a Helix he brought over one time, so they recognize that. I have a Boss Katana. I also have this as another interface. So it'll pop, whatever interface you have will pop up in this list, and that's the one you go with. I will put links in the description to the uh, most common interfaces that people use when just starting out. Um, that'll be the Behringer UM2, the Audient ID4, which is what I use, and the Scarlet series, the second, third, and fourth gens. All those links will be in the description below to download those drivers. So real quick before we get further into this video, I thought we would talk about speaker setup. So first, if you have uh, monitors, you typically want to run that out through a left and right output pretty self-explanatory. Black is left, uh, red is right. Now, if you're running some cheapo subwoofer system, which is what I'm also doing on top of the monitors here, speaker there, speaker there, subwoofer under the desk. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking one of the headphone outputs and running it into the auxiliary of my little speaker system. That's just the volume and power knob for it. And that'll also work. The main thing here is whatever you're playing your sound back through, make sure it is hooked up to your interface, not hooked up to your computer, because otherwise you're going to have some sort of delay going on. It's not going to act right. Just make sure your sound is coming from your audio interface. One thing I want to point out is uh, this little bar right here. It's called your transport. And for a while, I had no idea how to make it appear and reappear when I would accidentally like make it disappear, however the heck I would do it. But if that's ever not there, just go up to view and you're going to hit transport. See, now it's gone. View, transport, it pops back up. All right, so let's get to the fun part and start putting in our tracks. You can do this one of two ways. You could double click or you can hit control T and that'll just pop them in. Um, right now we're going to do a mix bus, drums, bass, guitar bus, guitar left, guitar right. All right, so now I want to show you guys a function that for the first two to three years of me doing music, I didn't know about in Reaper and it makes things a lot easier and that's uh, group busing. So what we're gonna do is, uh, like I said, I am going to make this first track a mix bus. Type that in, just double clicked it, typed it, hit enter, easy as that. Now go up top here, there's this tiny little folder that's kind of hard to see, but you click that one time and now all these tracks go to the mix bus instead of the master bus. Taking it further, let's do our guitar bus. Now again, click this folder on the guitar bus, and now just these two tracks are going to the guitar bus, and that guitar bus is going to the mix bus. See how that kind of works now? And also for your guitars, always hard pan left and hard pan right. We'll label them a while. I guess we'll go in here and label our drums and bass as well, so you can kind of see the big picture here. and. You know how this is just supposed to be a simple uh, project to just help you get writing. Let's go ahead and change the colors because I just like to change the colors. You can change it to whatever you want. I typically go for some sort of dark purple with the drum or the mix bus. I don't know why. Drums, I always make red. I don't know why. Bass, I always make green. I don't know why. Click, hold shift. Guitar bus, guitars, I always make blue. I don't know why. Now let's get to the fun stuff. So first we're just gonna start with drums because 
drums. But you're gonna my mine's a mess. I have a butt ton of um developers here on the left because I have so many plugins and God don't go down that loophole. You don't need as many plugins as you think you do, I promise you. So when you download Monster Drums, the link for that will also be in the description. All the um, all the links for all the plugins I'm using will be in the description to download these. Once you have downloaded this, um, it'll show up under, I guess, Agus, Agus, Hardeman, but you're gonna look for version three, click add. Now, obviously, since you know this is, uh, we, we were primarily doing metal, of course I downloaded the metal pack. Um, for some reason, this one, keeps defaulting to three just look out for that don't know why but uh make sure they work i just go with this kit as a free option because to me it's one of the best sounding free uh, metal drum kits you can get it comes with a bunch of other ones i don't know why the other ones aren't showing up but there's like this other kind of thrashy metal kit it's okay but this one's where it's at that's pretty much all you need to do for that you don't really need to change anything. Everything's pre-panned and all that good stuff. Why is this one defaulting to three again? Oh, because I swapped it. All you gotta do, you just click down in here to um, put in any plugin, all these little bars here. Um, you'll see this thing pop up too. I'm gonna go over this. You'll see this pop up. This is uh, for your sends. If you wanna send this to another channel for whatever reason. That's how I used to do it. That was way more tedious than doing the group buses when I wanted to do group busing. That's why I showed you guys that trick to begin with. But anyways, that's how you insert plugins. Um, we're just gonna keep the drums there for now. We're not gonna do any post-processing right now because we're just trying to get something set up to just start jamming and writing. Moving on, um, so you don't need to download this if you have a bass guitar that you're planning to play through. But if you don't have a bass guitar or don't wanna play the bass, you can, there's all kinds of bass plugins out there, virtual instruments and whatnot. If you want a free option, there's a company called Ample that makes a free bass. That's not bad. Here we go. And that'll be under Ample Bass P Light 2. So that'll pop up. Uh, click it, make sure it sounds coming through. Ah, it is not. Why is this? Oh, because I was on the wrong key. Okay, so there's... I was down here. Okay, okay. So here's the thing with this bass. Here's your B, C. B is the lowest note you get with this bass. Now you can use a pitch shifter plugin, which Reaper has included when you download the program. Um, you can uh, shift it down. There's problems that come with that if you're recording while using it. It'll kind of make your recording delay listening back when you're actually playing your guitar or whatever. So that's something to kind of look out for. Otherwise, this bass, if you're not playing anything lower than B, this will do just fine to get you started. Like most people seem to be around drop C, so there's your C. All right, so we got the bass in there. We're not crazy about the tone. So here's another free plugin we can download to make this shine some more. Again, have the link for uh, this uh, plugin in the description. It's gonna be under TSC Audio, which they are awesome. But it's gonna be the BOD, click add. Bring this guy back up. Get more of a grimy tone there. Let me get this guy back up here. There we go. And typically I would kind of drive it a bit more, cut back the highs a bit, maybe boost the low. I'm just guessing right now. A little bit more presence. Let me give it a little bit more drive. There we go. A little grimy. Um, play with this stuff. There's no right or wrong answer, no perfect you know tuning or eq moves like it's all going to depend on what you got you know what you're working with and whatnot so just play around with these like say you just want to crank the shit out of that drive actually doesn't sound too bad so with this i don't know if it's just supposed to be straight um like bass di or not but we're going to add a cabinet after this pedal anyways and what i'm going to use for this video is uh what is it ignite ignite it is the oh my god there's so much why is ignite there we go it's not in here Shit. so this cabinet loader is actually under stl tones i thought it was ignite because it says ignite and a whatever nat ir um weird anyways just so you know that's why i had to cut the video there for a second but it's under stl tones and not ignite whatever this is downloaded through the ignite emissary plugin which i'm going to be going over on the guitars then but I'm just gonna use this for now for um, IR loader. So every time this loads up, um, you're gonna have one on each side. You can just kinda, you know, pan it to whatever one you're gonna be loading them through or if you wanna go back and forth between other ones. Whenever this loads up though, resonance is always up to 40. I don't know why, that kinda adds like, it adds like a harshness to it. 
and then your low pass is always down the hallway. I don't know why it's like that by default, but just turn that all off. Um, even if you don't understand what that does yet, just do it for now because otherwise that's going to be altering the sound of uh, what you got going through. So I'll show you, this is what's called an impulse response and what it's doing is emulating a speaker cabinet. Now I'll go through the different ones so you can kind of hear what they sound like. So the bass, it's kind of hard to hear, but that's basically like, you know, swapping out a, a speaker cabinet through, you know, an actual amp setup. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to load up some um, actual bass IRs. I have the download link in the description to these impulse responses. So what you would do is click this folder here. You'll have to go to whatever folder that you have them downloaded in. I have an absolute mess of IRs in here, but these ones are by Panda Cabs. It's the free pack and it has some bass cabs. Uh, you go to free pack, bass cabs, you go to wave. Um, I think channel B is supposed to be like, yeah, okay, I think that's more like metally and this is gonna be more, well, I don't know. Now they're about the same, whatever. Choose whichever, they're all gonna sound cool in some way. So we'll do aggressive cab. There we go, that sounds more bassy than the other ones. There we go. So yeah, it you know wherever you designate your impulse response uh, file path is where you'll go. You know, click this folder and go into your files and look for it and load it up. And that's about all you need for bass right now. Like I said, we're just trying to do a pretty basic um, project so that way you can get the writing and not have a bunch of plugins on a project that's gonna slow things down. We're gonna move on to the guitars. So like I said, we got a guitar bus here. We're not gonna worry about anything on that bus right now. So like I was talking about earlier. We're going to go with, and so we're already on STL tones. Perfect. So we're going to go with the Ignite Emissary. This is going to be your amp. It's set to, yeah, you got your clean and lead. Lead is, you know, metals. Clean is not the metals. Um, this is where you swap back and forth for your clean and your lead. Same thing we did earlier. We're going to uh, load the uh, impulse response loader, the NIDR. I'll show you again how this does this crap by default. Don't know why. Turn that resonance down. Low pass the whole way up. Um, and these are actually not bad impulse responses that come with it. So we're just going to leave them for, uh, for now, just for the sake of simplicity. I mean, you're always going to want this to be in this order. You're going to have amp and then cabinet. And uh, I should have added this first, but whatever. Um, we're going to do a, uh, a boost in front of the amp. So we're actually going to go to TSE Audio, another free uh, plugin in the description, TSE 808, which is emulating, go figure, an 808 overdrive. So that popped up at the bottom because I was stupid and didn't put it at the top first. So we're gonna drag it on up above the emissary and boom, keep the drive down, the whole metal trick, tightness, whatever. You can keep the volume around there. You don't need to crank it unless you want to. Tone to taste, whatever. Keep stereo off since we're gonna do left and right mono guitars. And uh, there's your basic amp setup right there. Overdrive, amp, and your cabinet. And then from here, once you're actually playing through it, um, you would adjust, you know, you have your, this is, this amp's actually really cool for a free amp. You know, you got your gain and then you have bass and instead of just mids, it's got low and high mids. That's pretty sweet if you ask me. So that's your basic amp setup. Now you would do the same thing on the right side, but instead of doing the exact setup, I'm going to do a different plugin so we can see how other plugins kind of look without having to have all the extra, you know, or having um, three plugins. This one's going to be an all in one kind of deal. So another free plugin. Uh, link in the description. TSC X50. It basically mimics a uh, 6505 PV, the old 5150s, whatever you want to call them. Um, this thing's cool. It's really awesome. It's got everything you need in one amp setup. Um, you can right click, add pedal, uh, dynamics. Uh, oh, yeah, that's actually, we need to go over this. So you can add a noise fighter, which is a noise gate. Uh, definitely want that and we'll actually have to use one over here because this one does not have a noise gate built into any of these So we'll have to put a noise gate on that then but we'll get to that in a second and then going back here distortion TSC 808 Cool, you know, what I mean it's like the same setup and then you got your cabinets and stuff over here You know the impulse responses. I mean this has more customizable settings and like I said, this is a free amp and this is a sweet Plug-in for free like it's awesome all right, so going back to this amp, talking about the noise gate. So there's a few different uh, noise gate plugins we could put in front of all of this. Like I was saying earlier, a bunch of plugins come with Reaper, and they're going to be up here under the Kakos folder, and uh, we're going to look for Rea Gate. Now, you'll probably have to get yourself familiar with a noise gate to uh, kind of understand what this does. Most important thing is this guy. And this is going to depend on your setup, depending on how hot or not hot your pickups are. This, you know, this is your threshold of where it starts to cut the sound off. 
but for just some basic settings to get you started i would keep the hold practically on zero you don't really want it to like you know like decay basically and the tack you could probably just bring that down to zero if you just zero this all out uh release i would kind of just leave it alone be honest with you and kind of play with it from there but these are the controls are kind of self-explanatory but if you're really new new you might not know any of this so i would probably just go on youtube and maybe just like you know search some stuff on like you know how uh, these work i won't get into that now because this is just a basic setup but if you wanted to run a noise gate in front of this which i recommend you could do it this way and just drag it up to the top i said drag it up to the top there we go now there's another way to do this instead of using that plugin you could i'm gonna hit was it alt and click that'll delete a plugin now what you can do now let's say this has a noise gate in this so you can actually drag this over above it open this turn this off and this off and this off you're basically turning everything off you click the little red lights and keep the pedals on turn this one off and then you can actually just use the noise gate from this plugin if you like this more there's a little you know a little bit more simplified here there's your attack your fade you probably want the attack a little high like I said, it's going to depend on your setup and then you know, your threshold. Right around there probably be a decent starting point. But yeah, you can do it that way too if you don't like looking at the uh, Reaper plugins. Like they're awesome plugins, you know, they work great, but they're not exactly the most um, attractive things to look at. So you could always just do this if you wanted to. But yeah, that's another way to do it. And um, this is your, this is a basic setup for getting started writing. I can make a video on like actually recording a riff and how to go through the recording process, but I just wanted to show you guys like how to set this up so you can get to the next step because a lot of people seem to, you know, struggle with this part and like understanding what any of this stuff is. And I get it because, you know, it's it's new. You have no idea. I didn't know. It took me a while. I've been doing this for, I don't even know how many years now, probably like six, seven, maybe eight. I don't know. I don't remember, but it takes time to figure things out. So I'm just hoping I can help give you guys a jump start to things that I didn't know when starting out. Well, I hope this video was uh, helpful. I hope it'll help you guys get jamming sooner and writing sooner. If there's anything you want me to go over, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want me to do a video of uh, just like a little riff to kind of show you guys how like I go about recording a riff and then adding to it and whatnot, um, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I won't really know exactly what all to post until I hear what you guys need help with or whatever. So, you know, that's why I'm making these videos, just trying to help, you know, anyone out that's new to this. So let me know and uh, I will get back to you guys. Thanks for watching.